today we're making the next billion dollar unicorn app foodie which is a restaurant viewing app based on your location all right maybe not the next billion dollar company but in this tutorial you will learn a lot of cool things about swift ui new apis introduced to us in ios 15 as well as how to build up a networking client and hit the Yelp API and work a little bit with the location. Get started, there's a starter project in the description underneath the like button. Be sure to download it and open it in Xcode before continuing to the next part. Also, I wanna mention I'm dropping the next part of this video series on my Patreon, so check that out there. Now, let's start the tutorial. Before we dive into Xcode, let's quickly go over all the different screens that we're gonna be building out starting with the permission screen. Here, this screen's gonna be presented modally and it's gonna have a cool little animation of all these icons. They're kinda gonna look like they're floating in space. There's gonna be a button, which is the call to action. When it's pressed, we're gonna ask the user for their location. And if they give it to us, the screen will dismiss and we'll navigate to the home screen. On the home screen, you can see there's quite a bit here. We need the user's city based on their location. So we're gonna have to geo-encode it. There's a search bar where we're gonna add some autocomplete functionality, which is new in Swift UI 3, iOS 15. There's the categories. When you select these, we're gonna make a request to Yelp based on the category that was selected and refresh the list. And then when the list or the app first launches, we're gonna just show all the restaurants around that particular user based on their location. And you can see there's a little gradient down here as well, which looks really nice. And they'll be able to scroll this. When you select the cell, we're gonna to navigate to the detail screen. You can see we have a big map taking up most of the space on the screen, followed by some details. Here, the restaurant name, a mini description or categories, or whatever we decide to put here. The location, and after selecting this, you'll be navigated to maps where you can get directions to this place. We have the rating, how expensive it is, the hours of operation, the phone number. And finally, this is gonna be a little collection view where you can swipe through all the different photos that the Yelp API gives us. So there's a lot here. I'm gonna quickly go over the prototype as well. So if you decide to get this on Patreon, when we launch this, you can see that I've configured it to work with my designs. And when I select get started, it's gonna dismiss. We're on the home screen now. Let's select the detail. You can see that the detail shows up and then we can navigate back. And that's the app. Later on, if we can add more features to this, like liking, that way they show up in some kind of list. But that's gonna be a tutorial for the future where we can look into core data and how we can add that to the app. And if you want these designs, click the link in the description where you can get part two plus all the assets and code on my Patreon. All right, now let's dive into Xcode. All right, so now that we've cloned the app, all you have to do is just open up the Xcode project inside of Xcode 13 or later. I'm gonna change my simulator to iPhone 13 mini. And while this package downloads, which has some extensions that we're gonna be using, let me show you the project structure. Some of these folders are red. It shouldn't be a problem, but if they are, just click the backspace key on them. I'm just gonna leave them for now. But we have a views folder. This is gonna have our views in it. We have some helpers. This is one for CG floats. That way we can easily just have consistent padding throughout our app. We have some generated files. This is from SwiftGen. I did a tutorial on this on Medium, so you can check that out there but essentially we just provided some configuration and it looks into our asset catalog, which is in our resources. And from here, it looks at the images and just generates these type safe enums that point to them. So you can see this food one just points to food one here. Now that we have a basic overview of the project, most of our work's gonna happen inside of this view for this part. And make sure you don't get any errors here. If you do, just quit Xcode. Sometimes you get this cannot preview in this file. Quitting Xcode and restarting it usually fixes it. All right, that fixed it. Now we're back 
what we're going to be doing with this screen is creating a permission screen where we can ask the user for their location. And we're going to add some flair to it. We're going to add an animation and let's start building that out now. All right. So I just navigated to the permission view. This is where we're going to be building out our first screen, which looks like this. We are going to be asking the user for their location here. And you can see everything's aligned vertically. We have all these images. They're kind of on top of this title label. We have a little description. And finally, we have a button. So first things first, let's kind of build out the easy stuff. Then we'll come back to the images. If we jump back here, what we can do is start with a geometry reader. This is going to give us position and size for everything inside of it. And this gives us a proxy. Inside of here, everything's vertically stacked, like I said, so let's use a V stack. These images are kind of going to be floating around, so we can uh, use a Z stack, which makes the images go one on top of another. And for now, let's just add in one image. That way we can see something on screen. So I believe it's called food one. There we go. The Z stack, we want it to fill about a third of the screen. So what we can do is say frame and then we can give it a height and we can say proxy dot size dot height times or divided by three. Next, we're going to have some text here. This is just going to be a title. That's the app name and we can give it a font of title. Under that, we have a description, which is going to say find cool spots to eat. And I'm noticing here our UI kind of looks a little bit messed up. Make sure everything is inside of this V stack. So it should go V stack at the very top. Then we have our images. And here we have our text and button. It's very easy to get confused with all this stuff being here. Let's make this headline. That looks good. Underneath that, we're going to have a spacer to give us some space. Then finally our button and our button's going to have an action for now. Let's not do anything. And then inside of the closure, we're going to add some text. We're just going to say, get started. And we can chain on a few modifiers to button. We can give it some padding. We can give it a width. We kind of want it to fill uh, the screen. So you can say frame max width. And we're going to ask our proxy for its width. So it kind of fills it up. And that positions the rest of our views in the center too, which is nice. We're going to subtract about like 50 points from it. That way we have a little bit of padding. And then we're just going to add a background color. So background, you can choose any color you want. I'm going to choose red. We're going to give it a corner radius and a shadow. And finally a foreground color, just make this white. I'm also going to make this bold and we have to use this modifier on text. So it's already starting to look a little bit like our designs. Everything's kind of off centered and then we still need to fix our Z stack over here. Let's add our animation. We can come here to the Z stack and add a for each. This way we can loop over all of our images in our asset catalog. So what we're gonna do is say one, two, 14. I think we have seven of these because we want each of them to show up twice. Then we're gonna get an argument of the index. And what we can do is add this image in here. So to make all of them show up, we need to pass this I into our uh, image name here because all of them are named food one through seven. And to make them show up twice, we're gonna use the modular operator. And whenever the index is a remainder of uh, seven, because we have 14 of them, each of them should show up twice. So after you build, you should get something like that where all of them are kind of stacked on top of each other. You can click this play button. The next thing we need to do is just animate these. So the first thing we're gonna do is come up here and add a state for our animation. So now that we have this state, what we wanna do is use it. What we're gonna do is animate the position of these images and it's gonna be pretty easy to do. We have one modifier, it's called position, which has an X and Y value. As you can see, 
And what we can do is pass in a random range inside of here. And this range is going to be from zero to our proxy dot size dot width. That way it floats around between the bounds of our width. And for the height, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna say random zero to proxy dot size dot height. And this is gonna be divided by two. That way they're bound to about half of the screen. I'm running out of a little bit of space here because my font's a little bit big. So I'm gonna move this over and we can format this a little bit. That way they are both on separate lines. And the last thing we need to do is just add our animation modifier. So we're gonna say animation. Inside of here, we're gonna use the interoperating. That way they kind of get a spring effect. You can play around with any of these though. See which one you like the best. For stiffness, I found 0.5 and 0.5 for damping work the best. So we're just gonna keep it at that. And we're gonna chain a few more modifiers onto this animation. So I'm gonna put this bracket on its own line. Then inside of it, what we're gonna do is say repeat forever because we want this to go on forever. The next thing we wanna do is add a slight delay. So we can say delay. And if we're animating, what we're gonna do is say, give us a random delay. So we're gonna use our range. We're gonna say between zero and one. Otherwise, uh, it's just gonna be zero. And we're gonna do the same exact thing for speed. So I'm gonna copy this, change this to speed, and we're gonna modify our starting range. So from 0 0.1, so about 10% to one. All right, that's all the work we need to do for our animation. What we can do too is sometimes this gets a little too cluttered. We can actually come up here, copy this, cut it out and create a variable at the very top. That way our UI code looks a little bit cleaner. So what we're gonna say is far animation, this can be of type animation, and we're gonna paste that in here. That way we can read it a little bit nicer too. It's a little bit easier to see what's happening here. And all we have to do is just pass that in here. Now we know we're modifying the position between some random, random value inside of our bounds here between zero and our width and zero and half of our height. So like right in this area. The last thing we need to do before this actually works is you can see it kind of does work. It just adds them randomly everywhere. So if you click play over and over again, you'll see they randomly are added in the top half of the screen. What we need to do now is just start our animation. So we can come down here. We can say once this thing appears, we can say is animating dot toggle and once we do that we get this cool little animation effect now we need to add some ui polish onto the screen to make it match our designs but we're going to be doing that in a later part of the tutorial the next part we're going to be building out our home screen a little bit and adding some api code that way we can fetch restaurant data from the yelp api now that we've finished up the permission screen let's move on to the home screen. Looking at the home screen in Figma, we can see that this one actually requires our data from the Yelp API. So the next thing you want to do is head over to yelp.com and log in with your account. Once you're over here, log in with your account, head over to slash developers. Here you'll see all of their various APIs. We're going to be using the Yelp Fusion API. From here, you can click manage app and create a brand new app. This will give you an API key. I already have one. So what I'm going to do is click fusion API. And here we can see our endpoints. The ones that we're going to be using is search business details. This is when they click the details on the cell. And we're going to be using the autocomplete. First things first, let's check out search and implement it. We can see this is our URL for the endpoint. And we can provide a lot of different parameters to this request. So like the location, some kind of term to search, a radius, some categories, which we're going to be using. And if we take a look at the response, you can see that it gives us an array of businesses. 
based on our criteria. Let's jump to Xcode and start building this out. In Xcode, let's create a new directory called the services. And I'm going to create a new file called the Yelp API service. Here, we're going to create a struct. And inside of our struct, we're going to have one variable. This is going to be for our search endpoint. And it's going to be a tuple. Inside this tuple, we're going to take in some inputs. Inside of this tuple, we're going to pass in some of our inputs. You can think of inputs as anything the user will do, like type inside of the search bar, select one of these categories, their location is an input, and we're going to take their input, for example, their search term that they're typing in the search bar, their location, like I just said, and a category. And let's make this optional because sometimes we're going to dis display all of them like when this tab is selected. The next thing we need to do is return some kind of out. And for this, we're going to be using combine. That way we can have some publishers that will emit some values when they receive data. And then we have some subscribers that will be listening for this, which is our view. And it will update once it gets some data from the API. So what is this data going to be? Let's import combine. Well, it's usually going to be an array of something because we're showing something in a list and it's going to be some kind of model. So what we can do is say search result and the second parameter in this generic is some kind of error type. We're not going to have any errors. We're just going to return an empty array if there is an error. So what we can do is just put never here and that should be good enough. Now we just need to create this search result. Here, let's type struct search result. We can make this codable. And inside of this, we're gonna have an array. Um, we can get back to that a little bit later. But now if you click command B, you should be able to build and everything should compile. This looks a little confusing. Just know that these are our inputs. We have our search term, user location, category and this is our output output to update list the next step is to initialize or create an api service that can be used by our home screen and we're going to do that inside of an extension inside of here let's create a static let call this live and now we can just initialize our yelp api and if you click enter here, you should be able to get our parameters. So we're going to have some search term, a location, and a category. What we have to do now is return a publisher of this array. And we can do that pretty easily. But first, what we want to do is create a URL component for our endpoint. We can do that using the URL components API. This has an initializer that takes in a string. If you remember from the API docs, we actually have an endpoint. Let's cut out the path and I'm going to force unwrap this component. And we're going to say URL components.path. We're going to make it equal to this path. URL components.query items. Inside of here, we're going to pass an array of parameters to our API. Now we have a few warnings here. It's because we used a let here instead of a var. So let's update that and those should go away. These query items, what we're going to do is use the term, which is going to be our term. We're going to use the latitude longitude. This is the user's location. And we need to pass in a string here actually. And now this would be a location dot coordinate dot lon and let's do the same for that the last thing we need to do is just add one for category it's going to be categories and we can pass in our cat and i'm getting all of these from the documentation which are these parameters these are going to be appended to our url and the one we just picked is term latitude longitude there's other ones we're going to add later probably, but these ones are good enough to get us started. 
Now that we have these, let's construct a URL and force unwrap it. We're going to need to add a header to this so we can authorize with the Yelp API. So for that, we need to create a request. It's going to be a URL request and it's going to take a URL. The request has a field for a header. Here, this is going to be the value of the header. And we're going to be passing in first bearer followed by our API key. And this is going to be called authorization. This is also in the docs. You can just go to the authentication part and this is what we need to do. For the API key, let's just come up here at the top and say API key equals, and this would be your API key, whatever it is, paste it in here. And normally you wouldn't want to do this in plain text uh, just because it's not secure. And people can actually read all your contents of your resource bundle of the application you submit to the store. The better, best way to do this is to either fetch it from some kind of server, especially using cert pinning or obfuscate it in some kind of way. If you can hash it some way that just makes it harder for somebody to retrieve. But because this is a tutorial, it just added up here because this isn't about security. So the next thing we want to do is make our URL request. So come down here, last part. This is our URL request and return array of some models. Let's say businesses or restaurants. I, don't know, I guess you can call them a business. Let's add a return here. And real quick, this is complaining. Uh, we forgot to, we need to change this to a var because we're mutating something on it. Now let's come down to our return. Here is where we're going to start using some combined APIs. What we can do is say URL session dot shared dot data task for publisher. Make sure you pick this one with the request, pass in our request. This is a publisher for the data task, similar to the one you get in the closure. It's going to give us some data and we can map on it, meaning, hey, just give us the data aspect of whatever this returns. Then we can decode it. And this is similar to how you decode a regular request, but we're using this modifier called decode. We're going to be decoding a search result and we're going to use a JSON decoder. Once we have our search results, what do we do want to do next? Well, for now, let's just erase any publisher and our error should go away. If we remove this bracket from our search result, did not mean to put that there. We're left with one error here, which is for our error type. Right now, this stream of modifiers can throw an error and we can say replace error with, and let's just init an empty search result. We should get a successful build. And at this point, we're almost there. We actually just need to add some substance to our codable models. I'm going to add a mark comment over here. It's going to be search result. So what do we want to, what properties do we want to have inside of this model? Well, if we look at our API response, we need to model it based off this. And we can see that we have this array of businesses that we're trying to get. So let's add a property for that. And we're going to need to create another struct. This compiles, but you can see our initializer up here expects some kind of business. We're not done yet though. We're going to need some more things in this business. So if we look back at our response, we can see that we're kind of want a rating. We're probably going to want the ID. This is everything that we're going to be showing in our cell. We're probably going to want the image URL. And what we can do is add these one by one rating. It's going to be some kind of double, but there's an easier way to do this. And I'm pretty lazy. So this is my way of doing it. And I'm sure a ton of people do this as well. If you didn't know, you can actually copy some kind of JSON object that you're trying to decode, like I just did here. And then we're going to go to a website called QuickType. 
we're going to open it. And here, what we're going to do is paste in that JSON body. We're going to name this business. You can see I already did this once. Once you do this, it should generate you some models. Make sure that you have the same options checked as I do. You should get some models similar to this. What we can do is just copy it, jump back to Xcode, and we can just paste it here. I'm going to delete this comment. After doing so, we'll get one more error, which is back here. But just appreciate it for a second that we didn't have to write all this stuff. We had the application generate it for us. And now that we have all this stuff, we can actually start using it. First thing we're going to do is instead of returning our search result here, what we're going to do is return an array of businesses. This array of businesses is what's going to show up in our list. This is going to require us to modify our URL session here. The next thing we want to do is map again. And this is going to give us a search result. The search result has a property of businesses. And now we can just pull it out. So we have our businesses. And instead of replace error with init here, let's just pass in an empty array. Last but not least, let's give this to our list on the main thread. So we can say receive on dispatch queue dot main. And if you build, it should successfully build. To go over this one more time, we create a request. We extract the data type from it. We decode it to our model. Our model has a property for businesses. We pull that out. If we have any errors or bad requests, something like that, we replace it with an empty array and we want to receive it on the main queue. That's everything we need to do to make this API request. All we need to do now is just test this out to see if it works. Let's jump to the home view. Let's just take a look at the Figma doc. We have a navigation view, a search bar, a title, and a list. Let's kind of build that out real quick. First, we have our navigation view. Inside of that, we had a list. This list had a for each. And inside of this, we want to show some data. For now, let's just add a range and show some text. We'll just show the business name, for example. We can modify this list type with a style and just pass in plain. Let's add a navigation title. That is just navigation title here. We'll pass in a city like Boston or something for now. The next thing we can do is add a search bar. This expects a binding. For now, let's pass in a constant with an empty value. This is going to yell at us that it's iOS 15 up. Make sure you select the last fix it. And this is going to add a add available iOS 15. We're going to have to do that down here. I think I set the deployment target to iOS 15, but I could be wrong. If you get this warning, just make sure you add this. Then if we build this, you can see the search bars added. The next thing we want to do is add some kind of toolbar item. We can do that very easily with this new toolbar modifier. We can add a toolbar item and this has a placement, say trailing and some content, we can say image, system name, person. You can see that shows up up here. So with a few lines of code, we were able to build out a large majority of our UI. We still need our cell and our categories, but the rest looks pretty good. We also have this gradient down here. We're going to add that later. The next thing we need to do is just show some data. Let's test out our API request. To do that, what we can do is create a view model here. I'm going to call this home view model. This is going to be a class and it's going to be an observable object. Here, we're also going to import combine. Xcode 13 has an auto import feature, but I found that it doesn't work well with Combine. The next thing we want to do is add some properties here. So we're going to be creating some publishers. And when you're using Swift UI with Combine, 90% of the time, the publisher you're going to pick is at publish or at published. And in this example, this is going to be businesses for our list. 
and it's gonna be an array of business. Let's make this an empty list or an empty array. Now at published means that this is gonna emit some kind of value and our home view is gonna subscribe for any changes. So that is the relationship. There's a publisher that emits values and something like a view, our home view listens for them. Also, we can add one for our search text just to kind of future proof this while we're here. Just initialize this to an empty string. The last thing we need to do is just create a function. We can call this search. Inside of this function, we just need to get an instance of our Yelp client. Just call this API or call it live. What we want to do is call search. Remember our first parameter, our first input is going to be the term. For now, let's hard code this to food. Our next one's a location. Let's initialize this with a dummy location. I'm going to use Boston. You can feel free to pass in any latitude longitude here. Our last one's going to be nil. This is going to be our category. We can just uh, pass no for now. And the next thing we want to do is just call it assign. Here, we're going to use the dollar sign syntax to assign this to our business. And that's pretty much it. If we didn't make any mistakes, this is gonna call our search endpoint, pass in a term, a location, a nil category, which is fine, and assign it to our businesses array. Back in our home view, we can make an instance of this view model, and we have to use a property wrapper called observed object. And the last thing we need to do is just pass in vmodel.businesses. We need to tell it, look at the ID of our business and I'm gonna make some room here. This is gonna give us a business for the name. We can say business.name, otherwise like no name. Let's build this, see if it compiles, it succeeded. The last thing we need to do is say on appear viewmodel.search. And last but not least, I keep saying that. Let's come in here and change this to home view instead of permission. That way we can test it out. I'm gonna run this. We're getting an error here. Again with this iOS error. Make sure you click the third fix it. And that should get rid of that error. I'm jumping back to the home view now. Let's test this out. Make sure that you have your API key configured from Yelp. I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so I just ran this and I'm not seeing anything. Looking at our API service, one thing you can do to debug this is add some print statements. And sometimes these help you narrow down what's happening. And here you can pass in some identifier to help you identify the print statement in the console. There's also breakpoints. So breakpoint on error. These are pretty useful and you can print out a lot of useful stuff if there's an error. So I don't want you to think that because we did this stream that it's very difficult to debug if something goes wrong. There are other modifiers we can use to debug in that particular case. But the thing, the mistake I made is I didn't put longitude here. A few other things I did, I also modified the category. If we don't pass one in, let's just search for restaurants. And last but not least, one thing that we're going to have to do is Yelp makes these doubles. So we're going to have to do that as well because they're going to have a decimal point. Ints are whole numbers, so that's not going to work. And we're going to get an error. That one looks fine. And I think everything else looks good. Unfortunately, sometimes the generated code is wrong, so we're gonna just have to correct it. Now, let's see if we get some restaurants. There we go. So just like that, we have a list of restaurants that we fetched from the Yelp API. Last thing we can do is update our search bar here. This is gonna talk to our view model, search text. The other way you could do this too, if you wanted to, I don't really advise it, but I will show it to you is if we comment this out, 
There's another modifier called receive on. Here we can pass in a publisher. And what you want to do here is just uh, go to the Yelp service directly and search, pass in all the parameters. Then you'd get an output. And inside of this closure, you can have some at state. So you can say businesses equals businesses herself. And then that would be an at state, for example. We'll have to also fill this in. So we can say food, this we can initialize to Boston again. And it's already a little messy. You see how it's cluttering up our view. That's like another reason I don't recommend doing this. And finally you can just pass in nil and should compile for us. This is yelling at us because we forgot the dollar sign. If we build, everything should work. And the last thing we need to do is just modify, delete this V model, and now it talks straight to our business state. And if we refresh, you can see we have our list just as before. And like I said, I don't recommend doing this just because it's kind of messing with our UI. So what we could do is just delete this, comment this back in, update this to our view model, and then get rid of this state. We hit the Yelp API, got some businesses. We created a view model, which talks to our Yelp API client, which fetches all this business data in a pretty short amount of time. And we're gonna just repeat this again for the search bar and the categories, which are gonna be in the next part. I hope you enjoyed part one. If you did, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this and tutorials in the future. <laughs>